Folks, welcome back to the podcast. In today's episode, Katie and myself are doing a walk down memory lane. And this is something that not as it's I hope it's not as simple and as I guess superficial as just telling our story. I hope that we're able to draw out lessons learned from our dating experience, our courtship, and uh, and really maybe even talk about maybe some things we would do different with our own children as parents. Wow, that just the pressure is on. I thought we were just telling our love story because it's almost Valentine's Day and we actually recorded this love story a few years ago, but it was one of our podcasts that got deleted when we changed platforms. So we're going to retell it. So some of you might have already heard of it. Some of it, it might be totally new, but it's twisty. Also, before we get going, I just want to say thank you to everyone that's left a rating or a review on iTunes. I was, I went over there like two days ago, three days ago, and I was reading the most recent reviews and they blessed me so much. It means so much to both Katie and myself when you take the time to go over there and not just, I mean, we love the ratings when you hit a five star rating, but when you take the time to leave a review, it means so much to us and we can read that and We really appreciate it. And if you're watching this on YouTube, be sure to subscribe, hit the like button, turn your notifications on, all those types of things. Uh, And Katie, anything else? Nope, that's it. That's it. Well, we'll get going then. The Now That We're a Family Podcast. Well, Katie, here we are once again telling our love story. Yeah, so it starts with me because... I was the first one to fall in love with Elisha and I was one of those little girls that was very aware of boys from a young age Hmm. and I instantly had a crush on Elisha. We were driving up to a family camp. I lived in Southern California at the time and we drove up to this family camp and I remember it was, it's Camp Dwight actually. A lot of you might go to Camp Dwight so... (laughs) I'll let you guys know that it's a camp that my grandpa started and I drove up with my family and I think I was, I don't know. I just had like bedhead. It was one in the morning or two in the morning when we got there and you and a bunch of other guys are sleeping on the trampoline. Yeah. I remember this too, actually, which is crazy. So you said you're eight years old. Is that yeah, right? I was eight and I remember seeing you and thinking this is so embarrassing i'm waking up i have bedhead i'm so tired and this guy's really cute yeah and i was 12 years old at the time but i had heard about katie and her entire family because i was really good friends with her uncle who was only a couple years older than me your uncle wade who was really more like an older brother to you than than an uncle yeah. and so he was one of my best friends and he had told me about his nieces and his nephews and his brother's family Um, And so I knew exactly who you were when you guys rolled up in the middle of the night and kind of woke us up because we were sleeping outside, outside of the house. And yeah, I remember that scene very vividly. Yes, I remember being really embarrassed. And then as the camp went on, I found out that Elisha was actually the brother to my two best friends at the time. I had met them at a different event and we were pen pals and Annie and Lilia and I continued riding through our teen years and stayed really close. But I found out that he was their brother And as I was doing, you know, all my due diligence there as an eight year old, and I remember sitting with my sister under the trampoline, which don't encourage your kids to sit under the trampoline, (laughs) looking out at Elisha, like totally creepy spying on him and telling my sister Kyla, I really like Elisha. And I went home after that trip and wrote in my journal, I want to marry Elisha Peter Boatberg. Wow. And I actually, this isn't just like an eight-year-old's memory because I found that journal when I was 19 years old and I was actually in a different relationship at the time, but. So did you burn it or rip it up or something? Well, actually that it did burn in our barn fire. Oh, bummer. So it Otherwise, wasn't Otherwise I probably would have framed it and oh. had it in our house. While I, you were dating this other guy? <laughs> no, no, no. <laughs> I would have kept it though. I kept our letters through dating other guys. Yes. I still have those. Yeah, which is, we haven't gotten to that part of the story yet, Katie. You're kind of jumping the gun. So Katie was eight years old and I was 12 years old and sparks didn't fly on both ends. Like I said, I remember meeting Katie, but then boy, it was, um, I mean, being almost 13 years old and then like eight years old, that's a pretty big gap, you know, at that stage (laughs) in life. And so I would be lying to say that Katie hit my radar as a prospect instantly. Um, however, 
she was always a part of my life, even if it was from a distance, because she was such good friends with my younger sisters. And so you were writing my younger sisters, and you would call my younger sisters at various times. And, and so I would hear your name. I would hear about different things that were going on in your life. And I always had a ton of respect because you guys were really far more like um, risk you guys, you guys took risks a lot more than we did. We were a little bit more risk averse when it came to like physical risks. As far as like family cultures go. Family culture. Yeah. So you guys would ski really sketchy stuff. You guys would jump off really high cliffs into water or skiing. Um, you guys would go like crazy fast down hills, you know, with like on long boards with bare feet, no helmet and stuff like that. And so you guys were pretty noteworthy to our family. And so your, your legend was huge, you know, even when you were like 12, 13 and 14 years old. Elisha doesn't remember any conversation we had until I was like 17. And it's funny because I will, I have like immortalized in my memory, every word he spoke to me (laughs) between the time I was eight and 18, because it wasn't a lot. But I remember one time calling his sisters and Annie put down the phone for some reason, because she needed to go check on her little brother. And I remember Elisha picking it up. And he just, I, I just heard him say hello. And I just like froze. Wow. And I did not say my name. How I didn't old do you say think you anything. Were? How old were you? I was, I don't know. It was in Redmond. So I was like 10 or 11. Wow. And he just like kept talking. Like, I know you're there. I know someone's there. And I was just like, that's a <laughs> <laughs> Oh, that's so funny. So really our actual relationship starts about 10 years later, nearly 10 years later. Yeah, when it, was, you were, it was a long 10 years. You were almost 18 and I was 22 and, or 20, yeah, 22. And I, I knew you had hit my radar when you were about 16 or 17. And I was like, wow, Katie Johnson is a catch and she's going to have all the guys come and, you know, knocking on her door when she turns 18 years old. And so prior to your 18th birth, birthday, I wanted to get in line as quick as possible. And so I called your dad and asked if I could get to know you, you know, I was like, Hey, obviously we lived like four hours apart. And so we weren't going to have like a very normal dating relationship. But, but I told him that I had a ton of admiration for Katie and that, you know, I was really attracted to her and that I just wanted to try to get to know her in a more formal, intentional way. And he said that he was going to think about it and pray about it. And then he just, and so we hung up and then he just forgot about it. He never called me back. Like, so like a week went by or two weeks went by and I was like, man, how long, I don't know what's a, an appropriate amount of time to let somebody think and pray about this. So I didn't want to call him and rush him. And so like two and a half months went by and I called him again. <laughs> I was like, hey, just wanted to he- see, you know, what your thoughts were on me pursuing your daughter. He's like, oh, that's right. I forgot about that. Like, you forgot about that? Like that's, the, that's all I've been thinking about for two and a half months. And uh, he at that point gave me the green light to write you letters. Um, well, actually, he actually gave me the green light to email you. So he's like, did you tell, tell him what you, he said to you? What did he say? Oh yeah. So her dad tells me, he goes, yeah, he goes, I've actually gotten this call from, I think five other guys. And, uh, I'm just going to go ahead and let Katie decide, you know, how she feels about these guys. So I'm just kind of giving you guys all the green light to email Katie. This is just like how my dad works. It was so funny. Daddy, if you're listening to this, I know, you know, it was kind of funny too, but he took, he told all the guys that had, you know, I had been friends with, I kind of knew, okay, I knew who everyone else was that was kind of interested in me, or maybe I'd shown some interest in them. And daddy was going to tell them all the same week that, okay, game on, like (laughs) see what happens. That's exactly what he did. (laughs) Yeah. So he, uh, did that. And Elisha was the only person I had no clue on planet earth. He even knew I existed. So over the next few years, like over the past years, between I, between when I'm eight and now, I just kind of moved on. Like Elisha was this ideal, but kind of like your celebrity crush as in like, I would go to his concerts. I would hear him play or like see him off in the distance. Yeah. You would read about me in people magazine and (laughs) stuff like that. No, (laughs) No, but it was like that to me. And in the fact that he was larger than life and I had no real relationship with him. We never had a full conversation and I would just like clam up when I would see him. And so I get this email saying, 
I still have this email. It's so awesome. Uh, maybe I'll put it in the show notes. Yeah. Because it's I'll just find it so dramatic. Uh, but it was like, hey, Katie, this is Elisha Peter Votberg. And I just started screaming up in my bedroom. Like, this is a joke. Lilia, who's Elisha's sister. I was like, you cannot joke with me like this. Because she knew I was, I really liked Elisha. And I was just freaking out. I remember running down to my parents' room and be like, did he? Did Elisha really talk to you? Like, is this for real? Is this for real? And my dad looked at my mom like, this was the worst idea ever. Like, this is <laughs> she's trouble. Already, she's already going to like ask him to marry her. So I yeah. was. Yeah, it, yeah. Well, which is why your father put like even a stop to the emails right away. He's like, okay. So he called me again. And he goes, Katie does seem to have like a mutual interest in getting to know you, but I think you guys should just write letters for you know, until I say otherwise. And so, cause he just felt like the postal service would kind of put a, put the brakes on things. You just have to, you can only communicate as fast as snail mail allows you to. And so we started writing letters to each other quickly, which was pretty honestly ridiculous because I, even though I had a great interest in Katie and I address all my letters to Katie, all of my letters in hindsight were written basically to your father, knowing that like I was writing it thinking of him reading it rather than you reading it. Yeah. So during this whole stretch of our relationship, Elisha never told me he liked me uh, or expressed really any interest in me. So like when we were in person, Oh, did you find the email? I did. <laughs> well, what are you, what are you going to do? Are Should you... I read it? Well, we'll I don't just put it in the show notes. Yeah. yeah we'll, we'll put it in the show notes. The, show notes. That's, yeah, that's, yeah, that's, the that's, caption was read this. Yeah. It's a little too tacky. It's awesome. That was the first time I used the word prevaricate was in this email. Yo, yeah. He had lots of emails. He probably, or lots of words. He probably looked up the thesaurus on. Yeah. Just for, to get, just to write to Katie. Yeah. <laughs> so during this whole stretch of time, wait, what was I thinking when I started? When we were sentence? writing letters back and forth. Oh yeah. Elisha just like, if I was in the room, like he came to a wedding I was at and he like would look over my head. Like he's looking mm. to find some other girl. Oh man. And I would just be like, okay. Like I would just feel so awkward. And, and why did you do that? Uh, so if he would act like, he was not interested at all in me. Uh, if I wasn't so thrilled with my life right now and so happy that I'm married to you and enjoying my life with you so much, I would have like the deepest regret ever from that one year of trying to date you. Because I even kind of regret it now when I look back how awkward I was. And I, this, you were, we were, this was my first relationship. It was your first relationship. And just my logic told me if I act like I am not that interested in her, she'll be that much more interested in me, which is like that's such like a classic, 12. like, that's what you should have tried at 12. <laughs> yeah. It's like, that's what all the guys did in the Louis L'Amour books. I read, <laughs> it's they true. would all do that. So I was like, that must be what you do is you act like annoyed with them. And, and it is, it's such like a 12 year old thing to do. <laughs> oh, it's funny as if it had been any other guy, I think it would have been like, oh, it's okay. Like I'll, I'll win him over kind of thing. Hmm. But with Elisha, I was so, like I said, just kind of awestruck with him that I had no confidence in that relationship. So then when he acted like he didn't really know I was even there when I was like standing next to him or like he would come down mm. to our house and he would kind of just like seem like he wanted to talk to my dad <laughs> or even my other sisters <laughs> more than me. Oh, no. <laughs> I remember just like having no sense of self-worth in that relationship. And also... So I was the first one to start dating in my family. My dad knew, just like to give you guys a little foundation for our relationship, my dad knew that he didn't want the typical dating relationship get very like physically and emotionally connected and then kind of break that off, move on and, and stack up, you know, emotional or physical baggage that the Lord is it can clearly redeem us from, but it's not ideal if yeah. you have to work through that. And so he didn't really know the best way to facilitate that. And so he was just like, okay, I'm going to be very heavily involved. Hmm. And like my love language is quality time. You guys, if I've said that once, <laughs> I've said it a thousand times. And so Elisha and I never got one-on-one -on -one time at all together. Yeah. And like my two sisters were always sent 
with us whenever mm-hmm. we did go do something. And it's funny because I think my dad was thinking, oh, it's just Katie's sisters. And like, for me, I'm thinking, he's sending like two competitions with me. Like I have beautiful <laughs> sisters. That's he's hilarious. sending three of us on one guy. Like it had happened that like a sister and I would both like the same guy at one time or one guy would maybe sister hop or something. So it, it definitely was a real uh, fear, yeah. fear of mine. That's hilarious. And it was just a very stressful time. Yeah, but I think knowing that your father's heart was to to have a healthy dating relationship that led to a healthy marriage, yeah. I knew that. It was not hard for me from like a principal standpoint to do what I could. Uh at least on the surface, you know, to honor your dad and to abide by his rules because Mm -hmm. they weren't far-fetched for me either. I grew up in a home with a father that certainly wanted what was best for his daughters, which was definitely countercultural to when it came to dating norms. And so I think like we do as parents so often when we look at the results that common culture gives you or secular society or even Christian culture and Christian society, you think, well, well, I don't want those results, so I'm going to do things totally different. And you start extreme sometimes, which I think is good. You're like, okay, well, how can I be totally different from cultures? Like we're not dating at all till, you know, whatever, whatever age, 18, or we're never alone in the same room or it's only courtship and we're doing the family relationship thing. And I, and I knew his heart behind it and I had no issue at that time, you know, with the way he was going about it. And in fact, I respected it because I was like, you're right. I don't want a common, you know, cultural relationship with your daughter. I want something that leads to a healthy marriage. Well, yeah, it just shows like when you went and actually talked to daddy before you ever talked to me, like, and that is the thing is like, Elisha and I both came from backgrounds that we want to encourage with our children too, which is you don't, um, you don't date until you're ready to get married. The whole point of dating is not to have a buddy. We can have friends and mm-hmm. everything, but that whole point of dating is to see if you want to get married to someone. And yeah. so we had that intentionality and it was just a very high pressure relationship. We did have some fun in sure. July. Yeah. So we started talking in February or April, I think. Oh, April. Okay. And then it was really uptight. We kind of had a breakthrough in July. I brought you flowers. And- he brought me flowers and he brought, well, that's the thing too. Elisha brought me flowers, but then he brought like my mom tea and my sister's gifts. Yeah. <laughs> <It was kinda> <laughs> But we had more like family. one-on-one situations, I well, think. Well, not really. We we all got, again, at that camp, Camp Dwight, now, yeah. years later, we sat by each other during like this giant game of telephone. Yep. And our, <sighs> you Boy. and I would mess up. We were spreading rumors about other couples hey, at okay, the camp. Listen, and it messed is, up all the telephone. This part of our story is pretty risque, so we should probably... Stop. <laughs> Put some filters on here. So not true. (laughs) No, but we did sit next to each other in telephone. and um, That was fun. It like bordered flirtation. Yeah, I don't think I held your hand or anything, but we were definitely like touching shoulders and stuff. So yeah. And then we skydived for my 18th birthday together. That was awesome. You're right. That was a week later. We went skydiving and that was a really bonding experience because I like almost passed out on the airplane. (laughs) Elisha did his I think I did pass out. Yeah. In the back of his head and he just (laughs) fell out the plane and I was like, I think he just died. Yeah. I I really do think because the guy that, you know, you go tandem obviously. And so when you are like us and and you're not professionals and and the guy said, just kind of like, yeah, put your, when you're ready to go, just put your head back on my right shoulder or my left, whatever, <laughs> by my shoulder, and I'll know you're ready to go. So we like scooted to the edge of the plane and I was, my feet were hanging out the window and I just like put my head back on his shoulder and Katie was sitting back behind me. She's like, your eyes were totally rolled back in the back of your head. <laughs> like, just take me to <laughs> my death. Remember any of it. <laughs> uh, so yeah, we had some really uh, bonding kind of borderline romantic you know, situations there. Well, yeah, in July. it started to progress. And I think basically my dad knew my heart was so Elisha's, even though Elisha and I didn't have much of a relationship. Hmm. And I also think he knew that um, he didn't know Elisha very well. Yeah. And he just saw some things that, you know, Elisha just needed some time to become his own man. Definitely. I mean, at this point, I was living at home, which is fine. I, I don't think there was anything necessarily like wrong with living at home at that time. There's a ton of safety and protection that can come from being a young man within a healthy home environment. So, like there's, that could be really good. And I think I was in a healthy environment, but I also was lacking a lot of the confidence and assertiveness that I think can come from moving out, being on your own 
and leading yourself. And I didn't, I don't think I was very good at leading myself at that season in life. And as a result, I was very unassertive and, and confident in our relationship. I think your dad saw that. And also, like you said, he just wanted to get to know me, know my heart, know, know where my integrity was, what level of convictions I had and what my character was. And so his way of doing that was to put a, a hard stop on our relationship say, okay, you guys aren't going to see or talk to each other anymore. And I'm going to just get to know Elisha. And there was no timeline on it or like no number of conversations. That was so hard. And so we had just started making real progress and we like getting our own little inside jokes and being able to have shared experiences. We were making real progress and there was a hard stop on it. And, uh, yeah, your dad said, I just really want to get to know you. So let's just send some emails back and forth. So he sent me an email with like three questions. Like, you know, when do you, when do you think you got saved? What is your favorite Bible verse? And what is something else, you know, something along those lines. And I responded to all of them and then didn't hear back for weeks. And so we can't talk to each other. I'm not hearing from your dad. And I'm like, dang it, this stinks because we're taking this break so that your dad and I can get to know each other and we're not getting to know each other at all. That was really frustrating. That was a hard chunk of time. So we ended up seeing each other one more time, maybe two. He came to one of my high school volleyball games and I was a pretty cool girl because my kind of boyfriend was so old. Everyone was kind of freaking out yeah. that he was so old. But I also do think that was kind of like the beginning of me starting to really question the whole situation. Yeah. Because I saw saying 22 and 18 might not sound that like big of a gap in age. But then when a 22 year old goes to a high school volleyball well, game. Well, and you just turned 23. I had just turned 23. Wow. So I go to the high school volleyball game. I'm 23 and I'm technically like dating or courting or whatever one of the girls playing and I was sitting there in the stands and I was like, this is just, what is going on right now? And we weren't really even able to date. Like we weren't able to talk. We weren't able to get to know each other. And that's really when I started questioning everything that was going on there. I was like, what am I doing right now? Yeah. So that's in October. We had a couple like random phone calls where Elisha would just like talk and talk and talk and talk and talk. I still get defensive when you say that because Uh, I would call you, your dad gave us the freedom to call each other. So I would call you and I'd be like, how's your day? And be like, good. I'm like, okay, great. So I was like, so what'd you do? Oh, let's see. I did some school today. And you wouldn't carry on. There no, was no, none no. of this back and forth. Yeah, and so I happened. would just take it because I would rather listen. This might sound egotistical, but I'd rather <laughs> listen to my own voice than listen to awkward silence. And <gasps> well, so this is the thing you would, I would start to explain an answer and you would go, yep. Mm-hmm, yep. Mm-hmm, 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 like over me. And so I'm like, okay, he wants me to hurry up and no. be done. And then he would just monologue and then we'd hang up and it was so bad. Mm. Anyways, <laughs> so moving on from that, Elisha went to this wedding and he told me about it on the phone and he forgot to tell me the part where he got another girl's number at the wedding and then he ended things with me. So that went pretty well in January. <laughs> well, yeah, that, I mean, obviously it's not a cool move, but we were on, we were both, I think, feeling the end of our relationship. Yeah. So I had written was, out a whole was, letter. Because I was so frustrated with Elisha. Hmm. And I was like, we need to either move forward a lot faster or end things. And it was kind of tricky because it was kind of a three-legged dog with my dad in the middle. And so we, uh, so anyways, I showed that to my dad. And my dad was like, don't do anything rash. Like, don't send it. Then Hmm. Elisha calls me up and ends things two days later. So I did not get the glory of breaking it off. Yeah. And again, the Lord knows with this timing, but it is easy for me to kind of, if I want to question the way that all went down, because I was in a place that I, you were still my, you were always like my, you know, number one, you were like who I wanted to pursue, but I kept feeling inhibited from being able to actually pursue you. And in this time, so we, I saw you in October you got done with high school volleyball. You had technically graduated, so you were definitely moved on from like your high school, whatever you know, connect you know festivities and, and activities and stuff. And it was December, and I was really getting ready to like pursue you legitimately. I was looking at places yeah. to move that were closer to where you lived, so that we could date more formally. Um, 
I really wanted to, that was like, that w- that just felt like so the stage that I was at. I was like, let's do this. Let's pursue a relationship here. And at that time, your dad called me and he didn't say we need to pause, but he said that I needed to do some self-discovery. He's like, I really think you need to go finish your college. You should probably, here's a couple colleges I, I highly recommend. This will be a good chance for you and Katie to slow things down. And it was just the opposite of what I was feeling. And I was like, what in the world? And I think had I probably been a lot more confident in myself, I just would have been like, no, I know what I want. I want to pursue your daughter. I want to pursue marriage. Like I'm, I know how to provide. I know how to do these things. Let me, let's do this. Um, and I obviously I would have said it respectfully. And I think you're, if I was in that position to say that, I think your dad would have been in a position yeah. to hear it and, and give us his blessing to move forward. But instead I took that as kind of like, why am I trying to force this thing? That's clearly not happening. And at this time I, yeah, I met this other gal at a wedding and yeah, got her number and then just told Katie, like, I, I don't think this is right. This, this, you know. I've got a backup plan now, so I think we can, no, <laughs> I think we can end things. No, so obviously the Lord works through all of it because we were different people a year later and the timing was right. And so, yeah. you know, it is what it is. So Elisha and I ended things. I had two different li- relationships during that year and Elisha continued that one relationship. Mm-hmm. He broke up like three times with the same gal and he would text me every time he broke up. Hmm. So we kind of stayed in touch. <laughs> And then I really thought I was going to get engaged. Um, and Elisha... To another guy. To another guy. To and I, we were talking very seriously about it. And I still stayed in touch with Elisha's sisters. And I remember talking on the phone. And she was like, yeah, Elisha is really ser- seriously considering proposing. And I was like, crazy. Like, we're both going to be getting married here soon. Like, that's so crazy. And um, I actually broke up like two days after that phone call with... Elisha's sister, Lilia. Wow. And Elisha broke up for goods like two months later. Yeah. I feel like that happens a lot in relationships. Like you get close to, it's like either engagement or you break up. Yeah, you get, yeah. Because you date long enough and you're kind of like, well, which way is this going to go? And so it makes sense that we are both at that stage in our relationships where we're like, okay, it's either engagement or if not, then why are we doing this? Let's end it. Yeah. So we, my, Lilia, Elisha's sister, And my sisters and I road tripped up to a wedding and we get a call from Elisha and he asks if he can jump in the car with us. He was on a camping trip with some of his friends. Yeah. That was on the way. Yeah. Cause you guys were coming from Oregon. Yeah. My sister was coming from Washington. I was camping somewhere in Idaho, I think. And you guys were heading to Montana. And so I asked if I could hop in and we met up along the, yeah, I-90 somewhere. Actually, it's crazy. We met up like down the street of where we're currently living. That's funny. So I remember Elisha jumped in the front seat and I was sitting shotgun and he told us that he had broken up that night, the night before. Wow. You're right. And so he had lots of good drama to share. Yes. So I broke up when I was on the camping trip. You said that's when it was like for good. Well, you know, you get out in the wild, you get out in the country, you get out in the wild, you're just, you're alone in the woods and you've got so much objectivity. You have all your buddies. Yeah. You got all your buddies being like, yeah, do it. Come on. Send the text. <laughs> so obviously he had tons to share. I felt like I was in a really like empathetic, sympathetic place because it had just happened to me two months earlier. I was still having a really hard time. Hmm. It wasn't like over for me at all emotionally. And... So we just talked and talked and talked and talked yeah, for so at, hours. At this point, it's bizarre because when I rewind to the first time that Katie and I tried dating, when we both thought we were the ones for each other um, and we were trying to make that happen, it's so obvious now and it was obvious to me at that time that I had taken so many of your attributes for granted. Like the core attributes as to why I was attracted to you and why I thought you were the one, I didn't really... Um, Like I didn't cherish and I didn't really like draw them out of you. I kind of, I treated them as like, yeah, duh. We, we, we both know those things about each other. So let's move on to these other things. Whereas the second time, and I think we were probably both felt this way where you dated, when you date other people and, and you realize that some of your core values and some of the things that are near and dear to your heart when it comes to convictions are more rare in people of the opposite sex when they share the same values coming back the second time, I was like, you, that's, you think that? And it's like, that's right. I've always known you've thought that, but boy, do I appreciate 
that about you. Let's talk about that for hours. And you can talk about that. And then you start forming a bond with that one thing. And then that can lead into other things. And so I think a lot of the, you know, the lack of the emotional connection that we had the first time was quickly made up the second time because we were able to emotionally connect on some of these shared values that we were really appreciating in the other person. And, um, yeah, so it happened really fast kind of the second time. Yeah, so basically all the chemistry that we were lacking yes. the first time because it was so stiff and formal was like instant the second time. I Elisha was a different person. He was really confident. He, I would say, you compared to when we dated the first time, you mm -hmm. were very like your own person. You kind of had to... Well, yeah, I think that you, you, the I'd whole, say. there's like so many cliches, but like self-discovery and learning stuff about yourself, that all happened when I was dating this other person, when it came to things of like, what do I really hold near and dear to my heart? And what are core values of mine and, and true convictions? And when you have to kind of like argue through those with somebody or somebody else doesn't have them and you have to ask yourself if you're willing to, willing to compromise on them. And you come out the other side and you're like, no, I'm not willing to compromise on those things. It's like you're that much more committed to them, you know, and that much more, I guess, confident and, and convicted in them. Yeah, I just felt like you were really convicted at that point and you weren't going to try to pacify people if they disagreed with you. You're just like, this is who I am, like it or not. Yeah. And that was really appealing to me. And I was in a place where now I felt really confident. I had been really affirmed in the other two relationships I was in um, by both men who are just really like telling me what I was good at and all the things Elisha didn't tell me hmm. the first time. And so I really felt like, okay, like I, I do have a lot to offer in a relationship. Hmm. And I felt, I don't know, also, um, those other two relationships were a lot more normal with dating and one-on-one -on -one time and all that. And I think my dad trusted me at this point and I was just older and in a different place and ready for marriage. And so we had the ability, it wasn't like a little ch kid or like a almost grown woman dating this man. Hmm. It was like we were peers and yeah. able to just dive into, okay, we're both ready for marriage, you know? Yeah. And so at that point, I mean, this was almost, yeah, I forget what month this was, like April or something. April a again. Yeah. April again. Yeah. Two years later. And uh, we, yeah, two years later, April. And Katie didn't give me a chance to date her right then. I mean, probably because I had just broken up the night before or something. I don't well, know what it yeah, was. Yeah, you weren't ready. Maybe you that were, maybe there's something that had something to do with it. He was still like <laughs> crying at random moments and stuff or tearing up. Yeah, and I don't think I told you that weekend that I wanted to date you, but no, you didn't. I, I knew I wanted to, and um, I had enough like you know self awareness to say to no, not to say that you know. Well, um, yeah. So this time, I texted Elisha at like I don't know two in the morning or something and I was just like hey I really know you're going through a lot and I just respect how you're handling it yeah, just like a classic <laughs> let's I, yeah let's okay, text back and I forth I got asked intro. by another friend up there she was like do you think you'd ever get back together with Elisha and I was like no no way but I and I didn't think we were compatible I genuinely didn't think we were compatible and I was over trying to make things work with mm. people because I'd done that. And so I was just like, you know, he's really fun. I really like him. I think I, you know, would like the affirmation if mm. he liked me, but, um, I wasn't going to like start a relationship. Yeah. And at this point, I think all I was interested in was finding a wife, you know? <laughs> and so, <laughs> so when you texted me that, I was like, what, like, what is this? Do or do you want to date or not? Because it, I mean, to me, that happens like all the time. I get it. You have to start a texting conversation somehow, or you have to start any conversation somehow. And sometimes, I guess, at that point, I was like, just be say what you want to say. Say I have a crush on you. Let's text back and forth, or say you know I find you attractive. Let's text back and forth. And at that point, you're like, I really admire the way you handled that previous relationship. And I was like, okay you've got a crush on me because you're texting me that at two in the morning. So let's just say, call it what it is here. Okay. But we didn't. And when he texted me the next day and we texted for a few weeks and then it was like a dead spell. We didn't have anything to talk about. And he friended me or requested me on Twitter like four times. Hmm. And I kept just denying the request. And then I texted him and was like, what's the deal with Twitter? And he's like, I haven't requested you on Twitter. He's like, it must just be, or LinkedIn. 
It was LinkedIn. Mm. You were like, it must just be automatically sending. And you never owned up to it till after we'd been married for like two years. <laughs> <laughs> yeah like i don't know how many times i used like nobody ever believes that's like oh there was like a glitch in the algorithm i think it's like okay yeah that makes sense like that's Four what it was times. for sure <laughs> it was just like a it was on this automated glitch thing with the algorithm so <laughs> oh my goodness anyway so then we we texted and talked and called and basically were just friends for a few months. And at the, during this whole time, I was going out on different dates. Elisha was talking to different girls. Um, actually, one of my good friends now, he talked to her. He was sending me photos of her being like, hey, I'm talking to this girl. And I was like, oh, she looks awesome. You should date her. And I don't know what was, I don't know what he was thinking, but I knew that I was, yeah. Still in first place. Yeah, I always. So I want, never was yeah. really that worried about it. Yeah, that is such a funny thing. Because you were still asking me out the whole time. Yeah, I was, and that's why. Yeah, I mean, basically, I wanted to date you, and you were not wanting to date, and so you still I, wanted to get married. Yeah, I was like, I don't know what else to do here, and so finally, I would. I didn't like actively date anybody. Um, I was just trying to like get to know other people. Yes, and, and they were uh, awesome. Uh, but uh, finally, like four months after that so four months after that basically I didn't want to date either until I was really confident in who Elisha was because I still didn't think we were gonna make it work for the long haul I liked having a friend that was helping me get over the last guy Mm. (laughs) and I still really admired him I still really liked him but I knew that my family did not have great associations with Elisha and Katie Mm. and I knew that that was gonna be like pulling teeth to get them on board. And so I kind of felt like I was flying under the radar with the whole Elisha and I are just friends thing. Hmm. And I knew that the second we went out on a date, like his sisters, my sisters, everyone was going to basically go into an uproar, Hmm. which is what happened. So (laughs) then 4th of July came, I came to say hi to you. And this was the first time we'd seen each other in person in a while. And you were just so awkward again. Yeah, I... I had set up a fireworks stand in Bend, Oregon, one of my many successful business ventures. <laughs> no, that was not successful at all. That was a terrible year to do it because there was this heat, heat, you know, like spike, and it was record temperatures, and the fire marshal put a total clamp down on firework use and sales, and so that was a bad year to get into the firework business. Anyways, I talked to you into coming by my fireworks stand. Because you couldn't come me. to the 4th of July party I yeah. was at, so... I brought, again, Elisha and I are just friends. I'm not going to show up there, just me at like 11 at night. So I brought the entire 4th of July party I was at wow. to his fireworks stand. No way. Wow. And he acted like, again, I didn't exist. And it brought mm. back major first time vibes. Damn. So I texted Damn him that it. night and I was like, do you act this way around all girls or just me? And he was like, that's a dumb question. Like, no, I like you. And that's the first time you told me you liked me hmm. a lot. And then you said you didn't, you said you just viewed me as a brother at that point in that conversation. No, you said, do you view me as a brother? And I was like, definitely not, <laughs> but let's talk tomorrow. So we called on the phone and I just told him like, I think the issues I saw at the time, I thought that you were, you liked conflict a lot hmm. because you would say things to get me mad. And I don't know why it was just like a flirtation thing because Elisha's a big time peacemaker And I just was like, we're going to fight our whole marriage. I don't want to fight with someone who enjoys seeing me mad, which you do kind of still enjoy that. Yeah. I think when I'm really (laughs) close to people, it's fun, you know, playing the devil's advocate or being sarcastic and trying to push buttons. But in general, I don't do that with people. Yeah. And I think I had a few other things that I just was like, in my mind, we would never work out. And so I told him that and you were like, why don't you just give me a chance and go out on a date with me? Hmm. And... I think that night we went somewhere and I gave you a hug for the first time, like a hug bye. Mm-hmm. And that was the first time where I was like, okay, let's go out on a date. Wow. Okay. That's. <gasps> well, I don't know. It was like a quick hug. It wasn't anything dramatic, but I remember being like, oh man, like I'm going to regret not giving this a shot. Wow. And I told you, I said, if you can win my dad and sisters over, then yeah. I'll have a relationship. Yeah. And and we did face opposition there, but it was really affirming. Once I knew that I, you were on board, I was a lot more thick, 
thick skinned at that point to take, I think, you know, criticism and negativity from people so that even when I felt the initial onslaught of, you know, kind of pushback from your dad and sisters and maybe a little bit from your mom too, I was, I was just like getting more, I was like, okay, we can, I'm in this for the long haul. Like we're going to, we can push through this. And I hope I wasn't, you know, um, disrespectful and, and stubborn in, th- in that way. But I was just more like kind of ready for it. I mean, like, okay, cool. Here we go. Like, we're going to, we're going to fight through this. So I didn't, this was in July. I didn't tell anybody that I liked Elisha. Elisha, I didn't even tell you I liked you. I said, I don't know, something I gave you some big hope that, okay, let's make this happen. And then in August, you came to, you wrote me a song, first of all. Yep. You're sitting on the bathroom. You're sitting on the, like the shower. Yeah, the shower whatever, with your like, he definitely, okay, now I know you like probably went and did like 50 push ups before playing that song because his muscles are just like huge and he's wearing this tank top. <laughs> oh man, I'm not going to deny that that yeah. happened. That's probably exactly <laughs> what happened. <laughs> I didn't know, I didn't know all the, all the prep work until, but you know. I, I think it was awesome. Hey, it worked. Yeah, I exactly. like the muscles. Anyways, and uh, he sang this song for me, and I still didn't tell my family. I was so worried about it. And then you came to this man camp that my dad put on, and after the curfew, I walked you out to your car because you were leaving. Oh, man. Oh. And a couple guys who were interested in me had come to the man camp. Yeah. Because, again, Elisha and I weren't, like, officially an item. We were both still kind of talking to other people. And so they came, and I decided, okay, I like Elisha. I want to pursue a relationship with him. Wow. And so we went out behind this big berm because there's just guys everywhere, like, swarming. I didn't want them to see us, and everyone's getting ready for bed. And back there, you, like – what did you, what did you say? Or I just told I you know. I liked you. I remember less about what I said and more about what I did. And <laughs> <What'd> you... <laughs> okay, guys, no. I know yeah. you have to clarify because it was not anything bad, no. but he like put his <laughs> arm around me and I was like, okay, I like you. And you're like, don't say anything else. Let's just dwell on that for a minute. And basically we snuggled back there for whatever, like 20 minutes. Yeah, it wasn't very dramatic. But, yeah. No, like maybe five. Five minutes. Because everyone, okay. meanwhile, my dad is sending out a search party. Yes. Everyone knows Katie's gone. It was dramatic. And yeah, you're, the search party was coming. I had to leave. And so, yeah, I kissed you on the forehead. Yeah, he was, kissed me on the forehead. And it was, yeah, the most magical moment <laughs> until of that point, my life. Yeah, and then hopped in my car and peeled out of there. Yeah, that was nice of him. He yeah. left me to face the music. Yeah. And just was gone. <laughs> I was out of there. Uh, yeah, I forget what the fallout was from that, but it was obviously recoverable. We were able to get back on our feet. And, well, basically what I told him is I like you, but we can't talk for three months. Period. Hmm. So we weren't, te- we weren't texting. We weren't calling. That was arbitrary. That, yeah. Well, I did it because I talked to my parents about this. I talked to your, my cousin, Ken, I talked to my uncle and they were all like, you just need to give Elisha some space. Hmm. And so I was like, okay. In three months, if you still like me and I still like you, then we'll start dating. Yeah. That was so lame. But again, during that time, I really had to work on winning my family over. And that was a really long process. Hmm. So I was I was busy. We weren't talking, though. That was brutal. And then we started dating in October. We dated for a few months. Knew we wanted to get married. Yeah. And then you guys went, you, yeah. we were both living in Bend at this time, which was great because we were able to see each other on a pretty regular basis. And then you went with your family to, I think, um, Southern California for a couple months. And while you were down there, your dad and I, well, yeah, basically we, we, we thought we were going to have to, we, we, I don't mean to tell all that part of the story. Let's just jump <laughs> to the engagement. No, yeah. so basically <laughs> a couple things happened. One we held hands and I think that was like an arbitrary thing we weren't supposed to do. Yeah. That, that I had, a, that I had said I wasn't going to do. And I went back on my word. Well, my dad asked, okay, what are your physical boundaries? Cause he wanted to be involved in those or just know what they were and have some accountability there. And Elisha basically was saying not what he felt convicted by, but I mean, how would you say? You say yeah, I was, tr- I was saying what I thought he would want to hear. Yeah. So he was like, I'm not going to hold your daughter's hand until we're engaged or something. Yeah. And that, Clearly, like my dad didn't have a conviction against that. I didn't. Elisha didn't. And so Elisha held my hand. But the problem was is that 
yeah, I had told your dad we weren't going to. And so he lost trust in me. He got frustrated, had us kind of take a break or we couldn't go anywhere on a, on accompanied. Yeah. We couldn't go anywhere without my siblings. Mm-hmm. And at this point we're just like, we just need to win my parents over. We kept doing things. So we're just kind of unhelpful. Yes. So he, Elisha comes down, visits me in St. Clemente and my mom tells me, sorry guys, this podcast is getting long, but <laughs> you can cut out at any time. We can't cut out until we get engaged. Yeah. So my mom tells me, uh, Katie, I don't, I just don't have a piece about this. Basically it was not working. Yeah. And convincing my family. My dad took me aside and was like, Katie, I think if you get married to Elisha, you're going to ruin his life. Wow. And I'll never forget that because it was that moment where I was just like, well, I don't want that, you know? And I think it's because my parents saw we are so different. And really when we were around my family, we still weren't very comfortable because of all the stuff that had happened the first time we Mm. were really ourselves. And so we didn't bring out the best in each other while we are dating. We argued a lot. We were very, um, like romantically inclined. We're very attracted to each other, but we did argue a lot. Mm. And I think if I was a parent looking at my child, I probably wouldn't think that it was what was best either. Sure. Yeah. But I knew who Elisha and I were one-on-one and I was just really confident that that's what I wanted. Yeah, and so at the point that your parents told you that you thought we should end it, yeah, we kind of a little bit panicked and kind of went a little like, what 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 would you say your mindset was there? Because we were down in California at the time, we were in San Clemente. I remember we went out on a date, and I just felt I was like, Elisha, you want to get married so bad. I feel like you're only in this at this point because. You could get married to me quicker than anyone else, potentially. Wow. But if we broke up, you would just go marry someone else. Like That's how I felt in our relationship. So I was terrified of breaking up with this arbitrary deadline of when we potentially could get back together. Because I was worried Elisha, just like with the frame of mind he was in, was just going to go find someone and marry someone else. And I really, at this point, was like, I've waited for you so long. I've been attracted to you for so long. And I was like, I wanted... I've always wanted you to be my first kiss Mm. and I hadn't kissed anyone. I really wanted to save my first kiss for my husband. That was something that I really wanted to do. And I knew I wanted to marry Elisha and I knew he was that committed, you know, to me in theory, (laughs) but but it sounded like we were done. Like I really thought we were breaking up. And so this was not a good frame of mind to be in. I don't recommend this. But I, we went to Ralph's to get some groceries for the family. And I was like, I really want you to kiss me. And I had to talk him into it for like five minutes. But then he did. <laughs> and it was good. Yeah, I can't believe that I held out as held off as long as I did. It's like, no, I shouldn't. I shouldn't. Okay, I will. <laughs> five minutes. I think it was like 12 seconds. Anyway. Um, so again, I... That was a big thing, though, because I knew that if we told my parents that we had kissed because we had said we weren't going to, yeah, it was we were really going to be in the doghouse, and we were already in the doghouse. And so we didn't tell them. Yeah, we didn't. And then... Um, you felt convicted about it. I did, because I think your dad asked me almost directly about how... Because your dad and I would check in from time to time, maybe mm-hmm. every other week. And I think he asked me, are you, are you, do you feel good about the physical boundaries that we've agreed upon and are you upholding those? And I think I said something like, you know, I said, yeah, or whatever. So I'm like, yeah, I feel good about it. Yeah. I think, I think, I think we're good there. And then I hung up and I called him right back. I think I told you first, I was he like, I just lied to your dad. I'm going to tell him what we did. Cause I can't live with this, which I admired so much. And, um, I was like, ultimately I, I'm, I want to walk with a clear conscience before God more than anything. Like I don't want to try to sneak my way into a relationship with you and not be right with God. And so, um, I called your dad back and told him the whole Ralph's story and how that, what happened there. And he, um, was pretty bummed out at that point. Well, okay. He didn't talk to me for like three days. And my dad is like, at least how I always knew him was he's a big time communicator and he's a lot more like me, like kind of blow up on the spot, not the person that like stuffs it down Hmm. and gets quiet. And so him not talking to me scared me so much. And I was just like, it's over. And I was talking to Elisha and Elisha's like, Katie, if we have to break up, he's like, just so you know, I'm going to wait for you as long as it takes. And that was the first time, like, I just knew... I'm getting all emotional. I felt like I knew that like he was going to wait for me. 
Hmm. And I just had so much, I was so bummed um, because we really had wanted to get married for a few months now. But I just felt like, you know what? Like whatever has to happen has to happen. Hmm. And I want my parents' blessing 100%. And Elisha's going to wait for me, so... Yeah, and that's, I was definitely there. I had been there for a while, so I was really grateful that you believed me at that, you know, you took me at my word at that moment. And it was crazy, because when your dad called me back, I was expecting him to just basically tell me to take a hike, to stay away from his family, to not talk to you anymore. Um, But he said, you know, in a very serious way, just kind of like, hey, like, you know, trust was broken. Um, There's no way around that. But when I look at the big things in life that I want in a, for my daughter, you know, I trust you. I trust you with my daughter. I trust you with my other children. I mean, I think of you being the father to my grandchildren. I trust your faith. I tr- trust, you know, your overall character. He goes, I think you guys should actually get married. And so that was like the opposite of what I was expecting. So you'd, yeah, be honored to have you as a son-in-law. Yeah, he goes, I'd be honored to have you as a son-in-law. And I knew my dad was going to talk to Elisha tonight and or that night. And mm-hmm. I'm just like waiting with bated breath. And Elisha calls and tells me that. And it was so out of the blue because Elisha, my dad had not told me anything still. Yeah. And, and your dad was basically was like, so how crazy. soon can you get down here to propose? <laughs> I was like, wow. Okay. And at this point I didn't want to like give him an opportunity to, you know, think about it anymore. So I was like, oh, I'll, I'll be down there this weekend. And it had to be a couple days later just because it took me a while to get work off. But I think like five days later I drove down and, and I still wanted to be somewhat somewhat of a surprise for you. And so I didn't tell you I was coming down. You thought I was working still up in Oregon. And yeah, it actually was kind of scary to me after the fact how good he was at lying. <laughs> because yeah. I tried to cross-check everything he was telling me and all of it all matched up. And, and this is something I do want to pause on this real quick. This is something I really admired about my father was that he went around and got advice from a lot of different people that he Mm. respected and ended up being like, you know what, this might not be what I have in mind, but Mm. if I, if I, you know, can see these big boxes being checked, then Katie and Elisha can figure out the rest of it. Yeah. It took so much uh, true humility and love for you because he, his, his, I was the one that w- we went behind his back, you know, yeah. his ego was hurt. His pride was hurt. His feelings were hurt. You know, his, his trust was broken. And so from his perspective, he could have had every reason and, and right just to tell me to take a hike. Um, but like you said, he like looked beyond his personal kind of maybe agenda or his mm-hmm. personal preference and went and asked advice and counsel of other people kind of learning more about me and that at the same time asking people about me. And coming to a place where he felt like he could objectively say that we, we it, I would be a good guy to marry you, apart from how, you know, hurt he felt by me. And um, so, yeah, that just took so much. Yeah, totally, totally admired that. That was crazy. Anyway, so I ended up going wedding dress shopping because my parents, my mom was like, we're down in California for only one more week, then we're headed home. Where I lived was in a town of 600 people at the time. So there weren't very many wedding dress shops there. So I went to a wedding dress shop and I was like, I don't want to do this. I don't have a ring. Like this is ridiculous. And two of my best friends showed up. So they had one of um, Lilia, Elisha's sister, and then my other friend, Rachel showed up and I was just freaking out. It was such an amazing surprise. Yeah, At the wedding dress shop. At the wedding dress shop. Yeah, and I thought that that was going to be like a giveaway that I was probably in town Because they had driven down with Elisha, but it wasn't a giveaway. And then they were hustling me down to the beach to see the sunset. My sister Kyla's like obsessed with sunsets. And I was like, who cares about the sunset? Like, let's just hang out at the mall. And they were like, no, 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 we need to go. We need to get there before it sets. And so I was really lollygagging. And I get down to the beach and there's all these rose petals all over the beach. And I was like... Oh my word, you guys, someone's going to get proposed to here. Let's hide. Someone's going to get proposed to. Like, again, in my mind, I'm texting Elisha and he's still at a shift up in Oregon yeah. at a work shift. So I was so confident he wasn't there. Yeah. And then I see this like trash bag floating in the ocean. And I'm like looking at the ocean and <laughs> I see it's like this white shirt. And Elisha comes walking out, out of the waves. He was just like laying down in the ocean, getting beaten up by the surf. And he walks out of the waves like the guy in Little Mermaid with his white shirt and his black hair and his slacks dripping wet. And I just lost it. I think I blacked out. (laughs) 
Yeah. And so then you ran to me and I ran to you and I got down on one knee, did the whole, had the ring with me. And, uh, yeah, that honestly, I'm not going to lie. I can't believe how well that proposal went. He that surprised went me two times really in one day. well. And then we got surprised again. Cause then we started walking your family all left and, um, we started walking down the beach and your dad had set up this big, like celebration and invited a ton of friends and family to this party. I was, yeah, we were so blessed. Friends and family drove for like three and a half hours to be there. And again, this was a pretty spur of the moment thing. Yeah. And so we just felt so loved and my family, any animosity that there was at the beginning because of how protective they were of me, were just so on board. And from that moment on, they were just yeah so supportive all in with our relationship and our marriage. And we got married two and a half months later. Yeah, so. which went so well. It is, I do, it's so one of those things that when you're dating, it's so hard to receive scrutiny from family. It's never fun. But once you're on the other side and you get their 100,000% percent support, you realize, like, I, I really want to be that way. Like, you do want to have healthy input and there there to be a certain level of scrutiny on the prior side of marriage, you know, before you're married. But then once we were married, we've never lacked support. There's never been an ounce of criticism or, you know, reservation. It's been total support. And I'm so, so appreciative of your family for that. Yeah. So that is our relationship. And the fun thing is, is that it marriage has been a hundred times better than that roller coaster. Oh, yeah, it's been <laughs> so good. Which, yeah, that's, but that's where we're, le- we're going to end the story there. Yeah, we will not keep going. So there you go. There's your Valentine's Day week story, folks. Hope you enjoyed it. (laughs) (laughs) We'll see you next Tuesday. Bye-bye. Bye.